Welcome back. You're with Newsday. More now on the news that a Melbourne woman and her husband have tested positive to COVID-19 in Queensland after travelling to the Sunshine Coast through New South Wales. The couple left Victoria on June 1st and crossed the border into Queensland through going to Windy in the state south. Joining us live now is Lawrence Springborg, the former Queensland LNP leader who's now the mayor of Gundawindi. Appreciate your time. We know the couple crossed into Queensland through your town on the border on the 5th of June. We know the woman had been suffering from COVID symptoms two days prior. The community there must be pretty concerned about how this couple's actions could, could impact locals. Well, good afternoon and it's good to be with you. And I think that's absolutely right. Uh, we have been very fortunate since the COVID-19 pandemic started early last year in that we've had no known cases within our regional shire council area or regional council area. And uh, certainly that's something which we've held up with a great degree of pride. Our community is extremely diligent and uh, we make sure that we practice all the recommended health advice from our authorities. And of course, we are in a border community. Many people from the southern states access Queensland or of course to park Queensland from Gundawindi. Indeed, it's the busiest interstate freight route between Queensland and the southern states. So we do have that level of vulnerability, but there is a level of annoyance in our community, of course, and we're always worried about the consequences of something like this. I suppose we can take a degree of comfort from the fact that uh, the people uh, were at the McDonald's restaurant for around about a 15 minute period. From what we can see with regards to the QR code, it doesn't appear as though anyone else was dining in there at the time. There may have been walk-ins. And certainly there has been a recommendation that patrons who were there around about that time and staff do get themselves tested. And I understand that that's the case. And of course, we need to monitor that going forward as well. So Lawrence, what is the checkpoint situation on the Queensland border near you? What sort of checks have been underway to stop travellers who shouldn't be there entering? Well, we had hard border closures for a fair part of last year, at least two occasions. We had those hard border closures. We had them initially, they were taken away, and then there was another outbreak in southern states, and then they were reinstated. But more recently, the Queensland authorities have been adopting a process where the police uh, undertake a significant number of random vehicle checks of vehicles that come in from the southern states. And particularly in this case, if the hotspot state is Victoria, Victorian number plate. So that has been happening. But of course, we always rely on people doing the right thing and being honest in filling out forms or indeed filling out the forms. And no system's perfect. Indeed, last year when Queensland had hard border closures, we actually had people coming into Queensland who were Queenslanders and who had been in hotspots misrepresenting the fact that they had been in a COVID area. Of course, that caused significant consequences within the community and further lockdowns. But it just goes to show, regardless of what you do, if people don't do the right thing, then others are put at risk. But at the moment, the situation is that the police are randomly pulling people up, that you are supposed to have a border declaration if you're coming from particular areas. And by and large, that has been working well. But I'm not sure in a circumstance like this, if anything can really absolutely guard against it. But what it's done now, of course, is, is put not only our community, but a lot of other communities in Queensland and New South Wales at risk as well. And one of the things that really concerns us is our good friends in the neighbouring community of Moree in northern New South Wales. It would appear that this couple spent two days in that, that community and they did visit a whole range of venues there. So, of course, that's a big risk to that community. It's a big risk to New South Wales. And because we have significant interaction across the border, we are a border community, it also puts at risk many of our own local citizens who actually go to the, 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 those communities and, and vice versa. So my message to people is if, you know, just practice all of the recommendations of our health authorities. If you've got any symptoms, please get yourself tested and be very, very vigilant. So, Lawrence, if the lived experience is telling us we can't always trust people to do the right thing when it comes to crossing borders and, and moving around and the like, do we need to reassess the border checkpoints at this point or in future if we do see further lockdowns in other states? Because, I mean, I understand those border checkpoints are extremely disruptive for regions like yours. Well, they are. They're extremely disruptive. And, and I think that we've got a very, very good tracing process in place in Queensland. 
New South Wales has an exemplary a tracing process in place, and I think that's been proven. So we're going more towards the this process now, where if there are outbreaks generally, we're relying upon people doing the right thing. We're using tracing. We're also using the process of random checks as well. And the police have been doing that. But I just pointed out an example where last year we had people actually misrepresent the circumstances and, and breach what were very, very hard and strident border closure situations back into Queensland. But I, I, what we're talking about here uh, is an outlier where, it's, and, and because of circumstances, the authorities in Queensland were able to detect this a uh, whole confluence of circumstances, and we hope that it hasn't spread further than that. But I would be reluctant to uh, to go in and advocate for hard border closures. We've been there, we've done that. Our community was supportive of it at the time, but it's extraordinarily disruptive. And no system that we've put in place has been absolutely perfect. This one is pretty good. The previous one was pretty good. But this one, I think, is is the one that we should be travelling with until there is, is, is further advice or any indication that we've got a, a, a worsening situation and the majority of people can't be trusted. Uh, but once again, uh, these people apparently knew the rules and it would appear on the information that we have is they chose not to actually follow those particular rules. And now as a consequence, we have a range of communities at risk in New South Wales and also in Queensland, but locally. Our health authorities are doing a good job. Uh, there will be, uh, there's COVID uh, testing, a clinic has been set up at a local hospital and also we'll now be working to uh, enhance our vaccination availability in our community as well. So again, take the advice of the authorities. Uh, we've got to keep these things, you know, we've, we've got to keep these things in perspective, but we need to always be very, very vigilant we need to be concerned enough to make sure that we don't drop our guard on any of these sorts of things. Lawrence Ringborg, we do appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. We all hope the situation does not deteriorate further and that uh, we don't see any further cases in your state. Thank you for your time. Appreciate that.